The net present value NPV is a method to analyze projects and investments and find out whether these would be profitable or not. Net present value is the value of a series of cash flows, positive or negative, over the entire life of a project discounted to the present. NPV is equal to present value of future cash flows minus initial investment. For a single cash flow, present value is calculated using this formula. R equal to discount or interest rate, I equal to the cash flow period. Net present value adds the present values of all future cash flows to bring them to a single point in present. NPV for a series of cash flows with the initial investment made at the starting of the project is calculated using this formula. Add all the present values of all the cash flows and subtract the initial investment. For example, use this formula to calculate the present value for period 1. Use cash flow in period 1 as future value. The formula returns present value of cash flow value in period 1. Copy the formula down to the last period. To calculate the NPV, use this formula. Add the present values of all the cash flows and subtract the initial investment. Value in B2 is the initial investment. Since initial investment is a negative value, add the initial investment. We can use the Excel NPV function to calculate the NPV of a series of cash flows and an initial investment. This is the syntax. Rate, the discount or interest rate per period. It must be supplied as percentage or a corresponding decimal number. Value 1, value 2, these are the cash flow values and could be positive if it is inflow or income or negative if it is outflow or payment. Value 1 is required, subsequent values are optional. All the values must be equally spaced in time and occur at the end of each period. When calculating NPV, there can be two scenarios. One, the first cash flow happens at the end of the first period. Two, the first cash flow happens at the beginning of the first period. In this example, the first investment outflow of $250,000 happens at the end of the year one. Use this formula. Initial value is included in the values passed to NPV. The formula returns a net present value of 11,924.35, which means that based on these cash flows and the given interest rate, the project will be profitable and generate profit worth $11,924.35. But in most cases, the first cash flow happens at the beginning of the first period. When the initial investment is made at the start of the first period, we can treat it as a cash flow at the end of the previous period, that is the period zero. There are two simple ways to find NPV in this case. Net present value is nothing but present value of future cash flows minus initial investment. So subtract the initial cost outside of the NPV function. Use this formula. Exclude the initial investment from the range of values passed to the NPV function. Add the initial investment to the NPV's function's result. Since the initial investment is entered as a negative number, it is subtracted from the result. We can use another formula. Include the initial investment in the sum of present values. Use this formula. To include the initial investment in the sum, we assumed that the initial investment is made in period 0. Any non-zero number raised to the 0 power equals 1. It is basically equal to the original formula. When using the NPV function, include the initial investment in the range of values and multiply the result by 1 plus rate. In this case, NPV function returns a result as of period minus 1 as if the initial investment was made one period before period 0, that is period minus 1. So multiply its output by 1 plus r to bring the NPV forward one period, that is from i equal to minus 1 to i equal to 0. Use this formula. Include the initial investment in the NPV function and multiply the result by 1 plus rate. The net present value returned by all the formulas 
is the same. The Excel NPV function cannot adjust the supplied rate to the given time frequencies automatically. When calculating the interest for different payment frequencies, you should always convert the annual interest rate to the corresponding periods rate. Divide the annual interest rate by the number of payments per year. If the cash flow is spread out quarterly, meaning 4 payments per year, divide the rate by 4. To download practice excel file, please click on the link in the description. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel.